Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sly Slime and this is the first of two tutorials about the new commands functionality in Minecraft 1.9. This first one is going to be about how to upgrade your existing systems from Minecraft 1.8 to Minecraft 1.9. So assuming you already have a map or a command block system, this video will show you everything you need to know how to upgrade that system. Or in some rare cases it will actually tell you why that is not possible and your system has been permanently broken. The second video which will be coming in a few days will focus on how to effectively use all of the new goodies in Minecraft 1.9. Let's get started with the broken stuff. Here's a list of all the things that are broken permanently that cannot be fixed. Luckily there are only a few of these, but the ones that there are are serious indeed. The one change that will most completely break systems is the change to health. The NBT tag for health used to be health, an integer, and heal F, a float. Those have now been folded together to form one proper health tag, a float. This seems like a good change in general, but we have no way of matching floats to anything but exact values, which means that any system that relied on matching the health of entities is now broken. If you're matching the health of players, there's a new health scoreboard objective type, but if you're matching the health of entities, you're just out of luck. There's no way to fix that in this version. Second thing I will bring up is the new player collisions. This is a more general change than just command blocking, but it is important to keep in mind for command block systems and especially custom maps. Collisions are now either on or off totally, and despite the team options that you have to control it, there's no setting that matches the 1.8 collision mode, which is that players could push mobs, but mobs could not push players. The way the game reacts to the no AI tag has changed as well, in a way that's going to be painful to fix in some cases and impossible to fix in other cases. It used to be the case that no AI won meant that the mob in question had no AI. Duh but also that the mob in question wasn't affected by gravity, it would just hang around in mid-air. That has now been changed, so the mob still has no AI, but it is now affected by gravity and other physical effects. Currently, the best workaround for this problem is to make your entity ride an invisible armor stand with the no gravity property set. However, entities are always automatically dismounted whenever they are in water. This means that if you use no AI entities in water, you are out of luck. Another important change is to selectors, specifically the r equal selector used to start at the center of the block the command was executed in and search outwards when a one block addition to the radius. That has now been changed, so the radius selector starts exactly at the entity position and has no automatically added radius. That means if you used to use r equals zero to select entities in the same block as some other entity, that will no longer work. The safest way to change those commands is to use the dx, dy, or dz selectors instead with a radius of 0. They still align to the block grid and you only have to specify one of them, the others default to 0. There's also in the current pre-release bugs with the c equals selectors. Some of those have been there already in 1.8.9, such as them being biased towards the block edge rather than the entity position. Another bug is that the C equals selector is biased to selecting the executing entity itself, regardless of the position of the command execution. In this example, all the creepers run a command in the center and select themselves, despite the creeper in the center obviously being closer. Changes to commands are two changes. The slash play sound command has a new syntax. This will have to be updated. It now takes a new parameter for the channel to use. What this does is categorize your sound into one of the categories found on the option screens, which means that your command block creations will now properly adhere to the user settings in the option screen. One thing to note here is that there is a new category called voice. That category is only made for map makers, so use it for anything resembling a voice or speech in your map. The names of sounds have all changed. If you're playing your own sounds from a resource file, this doesn't matter. But if you're playing the built-in sounds, you'll have to go through and update the references to all of them. If you're using a resource pack for your command block creations, you'll also have to update that. I'm not going to go through in detail here, but in general, you need to at least go in and change the pack format in your pack.mc meta file to 2 instead of 1, and then restart. Beta the Data has made a video about how to make your resource pack compatible with 1.9, so I'll refer you to that one. Look for a link in the card on this video. The other change to a command to note is to the slash particle command. That has two new optional parameters called player and params. 
The first one enables you to selectively show particles for certain players. The second one is actually one or more parameters and is used to give block dust, item crack and the block crack information about which specific item or block they are supposed to show particles for. If you haven't been using those particles in specific, you do not need to update your particle commands. The rest of this video we're going to spend going through the changes to NMBT data. There's quite a bunch of that and all of it is going to have to be updated if you want your commands to work in Minecraft 1.9. All of these changes have a path for being upgraded, but if you're going to upgrade a map, this is probably what you'll end up spending the most of your time on. Let's go for the general tags first that apply to all entities. First of all, writing has disappeared. It is no longer available and instead the writing stack is upside down, forming passengers. This supports the new boats that have more than one passenger, but it also means that any contraption using writing things is now broken. This will be especially noticeable in command compressors that rely on the writing mechanic. Because of the offhand slot being introduced, equipment has been broken up into two pieces. Those are hand items and armor items. Armor items have four slots and go bottom up with shoes, pants, chest plates and helmets. Hand items go main hand and then offhand. Drop chances have similarly split into hand drop chances and armor drop chances. Another change to all entities is that the UUID tag has disappeared. If you want to set custom unique identifiers for your entities, you will have to do so using the UUID least and UUID most fields. Another big one, numerical IDs are no longer supported. For Minecraft 1.8, IDs changed from numbers into strings. So instead of a block ID of zero, you would say Minecraft colon air. However, you could still use the all numerical IDs. That has been removed for Minecraft 1.9. Now only the strings are supported, so if you are still using numerical IDs, you will have to update those. Raw JSON text used in Telraw on signs and in books has been updated to use strict JSON format. This means that you will have to quote every string, including the key names. If you have been using the lazy syntax that worked before, then you will have to redo your syntax. Let's go into changes for specific entities. Potions. They no longer work from damage values, instead they have a new potion field. Custom potion effects still work, but if you use a normal potion, you should change it to use a potion field, and the type of potion is specified inside of that potion field. And that is a complex field and can have more data in it. The same goes for the throw in a potion entity. Spawn eggs also don't use damage values anymore, they now use an entity tag, just like armor stats could in the previous version. For fireballs and wither skulls, they now require the direction to be three doubles in order to spawn properly. Fuse field on Prime the TNT has changed from a byte to a short, so if you're matching for fuse time, you will have to update that match to match a short instead of a byte. Armor stance disabled slots have changed, it is still an integer, but the interpretation of each direct value is slightly changed. There is a bug report in the Minecraft issue tracker that explains all the gory details of this for the few of you that have actually used the disabled slots field. Spawners, they no longer have an ID field, instead they have a spawn data, and that spawn data contains the entity in it. And the same goes for the spawn potentials list that also has an entity in it instead. And that was that. If you're comfortable leaving part of this process up to an automated process, then there are some MC edit filters that can do part of this upgrade process for you. I can't guarantee that these do the right things or that they're even up to date, but I'll leave a link to one in the video description for those of you who want to try it out. And that was that. In the next one, we'll take a look at all the changes for command blocks and commands that I haven't mentioned here. That is all the new goodies. I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. My name is Slice Lime. Bye-bye.